Hello. Today we're going to talk about data mining on service history data to reduce cycle time and the cost of D178 ED12 testing. Uh, my name is uh, Chris Riley. I'm a senior system and software engineer uh, for CS Group, and I have over 20 years of experience in the aerospace industry. My name is Matthew Tack. I'm the president and chief engineer for CS Group USA, and I've got about 34 years of experience in the aerospace industry. Next slide. So as, as the introduction, we really want to talk about aerospace and defense, as well as UAS and the UAS industries ramping up. As the embedded software as the embedded software grows in size and complexity, airworth, airworthiness was and is and will be definitely a key consideration in going forward with the products. But there's also this continuous push to reduce costs and time to market for the products. Next slide. When we look at this, the, the typical v, v cycle for embedded systems and software, on the right hand side, we have units, uh, software unit testing, software integration testing, and software verification testing. And within those phases, the chart does imply a um, improve a continuous building up process from unit testing through the integration and then verification testing. What we're really proposing here is, is using that data and, and kind of reversing that flow so that we're using the highest level possible testing and providing coverage and, and artifacts associated with each of those other individual steps as we build forward. Next slide. So if we look at the testing process, you know, within the, um, there's been typically three separate processes with, with not a lot of interaction. Typically it, it becomes separate groups that are performing the individual tests or separate suppliers and that those separate suppliers kind of work on their own systems as they go. When we look at that as well, we, we have to understand that within the software integration testing and software unit testing, that we have to comply with standards such as D178, ED12, or Mill Handbook 516C. So, so we're really driven by uh, processes and guidelines associated with the industry. However, when we add system verification to that mix, we, we introduce a set of data that is really at the end user level that can then be applied through those various testing areas to generate those artifacts as appropriate to support uh, complete coverage and satisfaction of those standards. Next slide. Uh, this is uh, Chris Riley. I'm going to be talking about the challenges in testing. The requirements that you get in with a lot of these uh, uh, phases is uh, you get handwritten standard requirements that are never standard. Um, MBSE has not yet been adopted across the industries. Test cases and test, run, uh, test procedures and test reviews are all extensively manual activities. There may be some ad hoc automation done in order to complete the tasks themselves, but it, oftentimes it requires the engineering judgment and trying to come up with them on, on their own as well as reviewing the data to make sure it's correct. When you do test runs between the different phases, they're platform in, uh, dependent. Uh, there's platforms that use a combination of tailored test benches for the higher level tests and the system level tests. And there's uh, commercial off the shelf tools such as LDRA and VectorCast for lower level testing. What our group, as CS Group, has uh, come up with is a tool to help, I would say, uh, work between the different phases and and co and combine a lot of that a lot of that effort. Uh, we have a t tool called Tapes that's a transition analysis, parsing, evaluation, and search tool. Uh, basically, what it does is it takes the system test data that you already have that you have at the higher level where you're doing system verification, and if you include in that um, in that data any of the parameters that are associated with the lower level requirements, um, then you can actually run it through this tapes tool. The tapes tool will then look for any transitions in any of those parameters and automatically come up with test cases based on those transitions. And those test cases can then be used to determine how much functional and structural coverage you may have at the low level requirement uh, phase. Uh, in this way, you're not keeping the phases as separate as they once were. You're actually um, piggybacking on the fact that the system tests 
may already cover most of the other requirements and should cover a lot of the other requirements because they're all traced trace to, to each other, system to the high level, the high level to the lower level. Uh, so in this way, we are using this tool to data mine the information and automatically create the test cases so there's less manual effort and less, uh, um, less opportunity for, for engineering uh, error. In conclusion, it's to maximize the existing data for multiple levels of coverage. Uh, you're going to reuse that system data for low level testing, and it allows you to reach approximately 50% of the structural coverage. Um, in the past, you would have to do all that effort uh, in uh, manually for the low level requirements, and you would have to do that separately on separate test systems. Um, and in this case, you just use the same platforms they use for the system test, and you're covering the low level at the same time. Uh, there are improvements that are possible by processing more data. Um, obviously, more data, you get more transitions, more, more inputs and outputs, and you're able to uh, get your full coverage and bring that coverage up. Uh, thank you for watching our, our uh, video on, uh, on the data mining uh, as it applies to DL178, and I uh, appreciate your time.